it feels pretty good to be involved with the whole process uh, from Cold War plutonium production, defueling the reactor, safe storage of the fuel, getting rid of the fuel, and then finally cleaning up the sludge. It's like seeing everything go full circle. The removal of sludge from the, from the basins is the most difficult project and the most technically complex and challenging projects that I've been involved with. I've told our people on numerous occasions that this isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. On September 9, 2019, the last of 35 cubic yards of highly radioactive sludge was moved out of the K-West Reactor Basin and away from the Columbia River to safer storage on the central plateau of the Hanford site. It was the culmination of years of planning, design, and practice for the Department of Energy and contractor CH2M Hill Plateau Remediation Company, a Jacobs company. Sludge is a mixture of tiny fuel corrosion particles, fuel rod and metal fragments, and soil and sand less than a quarter inch in diameter. The gray silty substance resulted from the slow breakdown of irradiated reactor fuel rods left from plutonium production at Hanford's end reactor. They were placed in basins for interim storage until processed at the K-East and K-West reactors along the Columbia River in the 100 area of the Hanford site. Over the years, metal fragments, some pieces almost as dense as lead, paint chips, dust, and sand settled to the bottom of the basin. After 2,300 tons of corroding reactor fuel rods were removed from the 2K reactor fuel storage basins, sludge from East Reactor Basin was transferred to the West Reactor Basin and was eventually consolidated into six engineered containers in the West Basin. The threat of this material is that it's very mobile and it can be dissolved in water and if it leaks out of the basin, it can actually transport through the ground and into the water table and then from the water table, it's just a short 400 yard shot to the river from here. Removing the sludge clears the way for other work needed to finish cleanup in the K-reactor area and eventually placing the K-reactors in interim safe storage, the last of eight Hanford reactors to be cocooned, completing the cleanup reducing annual operating costs by millions of dollars. Sludge never does what you expect it to do. It will never do what you want it to do, and it'll do, the thing, it'll do things that you don't even suspect. And now how do you transfer this sludge uh, into something and then move it someplace to where you can treat it so that eventually it can go for disposal? So that, that's, that's probably one of the biggest technical challenges that there has been in the Department of Energy. Uh, for many, many, many years. Sludge is difficult to retrieve and transfer. It is highly radioactive and contains particles of different sizes and densities. It is abrasive and can damage equipment. It was determined that there was not a technology available to do this work. You know, there wasn't a vacuuming system, there wasn't a hydraulic pumping system out there that could do this work. So in that case, we did have to think from the ground up. The project team had to design a system to gather and retrieve sludge efficiently. The team started with the finished project in mind because they knew they'd get just one shot once the equipment was installed in the basin. A second chance wasn't an option because underwater repairs in a highly radioactive environment are extremely hazardous, if not impossible. So they tested the processes in an almost exact replica of the K-Basin. We can come down here at Massif and, uh, and recreate or, or even uh, uh, figure out what we need to do 20 feet underwater. We can figure it out here on floor level dry and, and get it to work here before we deploy it out there. The maintenance and storage facility, or Massif, was modified to test and prove the equipment and methods for removing sludge would work before attempting the work in a highly radioactive environment. Operators who are proficient in working remotely with the sludge provided immediate feedback on tool design and methods. We got our operators in the field to design the actual tools uh, to retrieve the sludge, kind of like the end effectors on a vacuum cleaner. Uh, they developed them. Uh, they actually, the ideas they came up with were, were more successful than the ones the engineers provided, and we named them we named these tools after the operators. Testing equipment and finding and fixing problems, along with training, were a very important part of preparing to work in the basin. The mock-up that we have at Massa 400 area 
is by far the best I've ever seen. And because uh, they decided to spend the money and the effort and time to get it right, and I mean they really got it right, we were able to get some great training on it. It's probably been the most difficult project that I've been involved with. Part of what makes it so hard is because the sludge is so highly radioactive, when we actually transfer the sludge into this, the container that's in the, on the trailer, people cannot be in that building. In order to transfer the sludge safely into its final package, the team built a facility near the K-West reactor basin. The sludge transfer annex is a hazard category two nuclear facility rigorously constructed to house the equipment to safely transfer the sludge into containers for transport. The way the process operates, uh, it starts with the workers in the basin. There's a uh, tool, a lance, it's called a Zago tool, and that hangs from a hoist, and, the, and that's the actual suction device that gets lowered into the sludge box, and the sludge is literally sucked up into that lance, and it is transported through an underwater pump, uh, and then that pump supplies the motive force that moves it over to the annex, where it goes basically into a uh, STSC, as we call it, the storage container, and the storage container is already in a uh, cask, which is sitting on the back of a flatbed trailer. And so that's simply put the process. After sludge is transferred into transport containers, they are shipped to the center of the Hanford site. A lot of pride goes in in this building. T-Plant uh, has been a integral part ever since the Manhattan Project with processing the plutonium that actually went to the Nagasaki bomb and in the tritium test. Uh, she's been an integral part for 75 years. T-Plant is the ideal place to provide safe interim storage for K-Basin sludge. The giant former plutonium processing facility was specifically designed to safely handle highly radioactive and chemical materials. Crews installed monitoring systems and made other modifications to safely store the 20 sludge containers. They will remain there, closely monitored, until the sludge can be treated for disposal. I, I think that people here at the plant are, are proud of that new mission. That means something. We, we're helping the environment by getting sludge off the river and putting it in a safe configuration so that it doesn't do any more harm to the environment. Years of preparation paid off. Thanks to training and preparations at Massif, the readiness reviews went smoothly and operators were ready to start transferring sludge. Uh, and I remember standing right here in this very control room and watching it happen. And there was probably about 20 people in here. And, and then all of a sudden, and dials and lights and everything was going off. And finally somebody said, all right, transfer's over, end the transfer. And they all looked up and said, that was it, we did it. And then it was kind of like a big, yay, everybody, you know, high fives and all that stuff. Once we started pumping sludge, it was beautiful. It, it, ran great. The transfer itself went better than expected. Uh, we, we transferred a lot of material today. The container is about two-thirds full. Uh, it worked out really well today. The crew did an outstanding job. Outstanding. It was a really nice feeling, you know, because um, I think it sometimes, you know, some parts of me and probably other people thought, this, was this really ever going to happen? Because it had been so long in planning and everything for this that you know, sometimes it takes so long and you just think, oh, it's never going to happen, and then it did happen, and it was exciting to watch that first truck roll through the gate. The team transferred, transported, and placed 20 sludge containers in tea plant over the course of about 15 months, completing a current tri-party agreement milestone ahead of schedule, more importantly, without any safety issues. There have been zero incidents with regard to the operation of this sludge removal project. Zero injuries, zero spills, zero releases, zero events whatsoever related to this operation. And that's an amazing feat for such an involved, complex operation as this. The team did not let up on following procedures, even after successfully completing the process several times. It was a painstaking process, but line by line, step by step, and with each container, they made safe, sure progress toward the goal of removing the sludge. Removing the sludge is a major milestone. The next goal 
is to empty the basins completely of additional equipment, debris, and water. The maintenance and storage facility is going to be an instrumental piece for this phase as well. Getting that sludge out will allow us to remove the rest of the facilities and waste sites of the 100K area, and all the cleanup work has been done at the other reactor facilities in the river corridor, so that's a, really the last big step in completing the river corridor cleanup. Eventually, the two remaining K reactors can be put into interim safe storage, which will significantly reduce operating costs at the Hanford site. We made this happen, uh, and we were successful, and we did it safely, we did it compliantly, and we did it the right way. And to me, that's, that's the fun. Thank you.